Hello Library to Laners. I'm here in Colebrookdale in the Ironbridge Gorge doing our next nature noticing video and I've brought you today somewhere a little bit different to the garden and workspace of Amanda Hillier. Well, I'm just going to pan round. Here's Amanda in Hi. her garden. <laughs> um, we've known each other quite a long time haven't we actually? Yeah. Uh, since our kids were little and uh, I was at the time doing lots of jewellery and workshops and teaching craft at West Hope and I knew you then as a graphic designer uh, and I've watched your work just grow and transform over the last few years, well oh, 20 okay. years isn't it, a long so, time yeah. uh, and you really do to me respond to the environment and to nature around you. Can you tell us a little bit about how your work has grown and changed. Well, thanks for the introduction, Jo. But uh, yeah, I've really felt that lately I've felt a lot more tuned in with the natural world. I'm very fortunate to live in the Ironbridge Gorge, which gives me endless inspiration. Um, there is an architectural level to what I do. I like buildings within the landscape, but I also am fascinated about the change in landscape and what wildlife does to man-made structure and how it softens the way we impose ourselves on the landscape as human beings. And the nature comes up and softens all of that. So nature, architecture, wildlife, it's all become quite big for me. Um, I use printmaking, but I've started to use painting a lot more as well, kind of mm. watercolour too. And quite happy to be freed from my computer, which <laughs> uh, was something that I was heavily involved in doing computer-generated art many years ago. And I'm just loving the freedom of being out there, enjoying the, the wildlife on my doorstep, really. Yeah, that's great. And I, you know, I mean, listening to you talking about that, it reminds me of my first early connections to the Ironbridge Gorge because I was working for the museums and nearly went down an industrial archaeology route. Uh, and coming from uh, an industrial landscape in Yorkshire in a family of miners, the gorge was a place that inspired a lot of my early work and actually got me into painting and putting my enamels onto canvas, you know, and it was... Yeah. Again, it's that response to our surroundings and living in a place like Ironbridge in the Ironbridge Gorge, you know, you, you can't escape man's effect on nature. And for me, it's that relationship with us as human beings mm -hmm. and how we connect, not just to, you know, a lovely idea of nature, but to ourselves in the world today. And the realism there, isn't yeah. it? When you see how we have changed the landscape or how we have used it. Yeah. And to some extent overused it um, but nature always wins out doesn't it yeah it always comes back it reclaims mm. um, and it I think Ironbridge the Ironbridge Gorge is a particularly good example of that and that's um, that's where I started with my journey in printmaking the first print I did was of the bridge because uh, that was a good place to start yeah and I've just developed it ever since and brought more and more nature elements into it it has passed along to my the other side of my work which is still graphic based I've done lots and lots of activity books based on nature inspiration things for children mm. jigsaw puzzles and things oh, like lovely. that so I, yeah. I like to think that I've brought it into more of a, a commercial the commercial side of my work too um, I never get bored you know <laughs> something it's changing all the time I take endless photographs of you know um, We've got a lovely area at the top of the hill called Wolf Park, which again is a reclaimed um, ex-mining area, basically, mm. and it's now a wildlife. It's sanctuary. wonderful for we wildflowers, we isn't it? And orchids. Last yeah, yeah. So there's butterflies up there. It's just really beautiful, um, and yeah, that it finds its way in, into my work all the time. And I love going back on my photographs because I'll see it month by month, and I'll see. I'll actually see how some of that environment is changing year on year as well, which is quite nice. You know, do we get as many of that particular orchid? Have we got as many mm, mm. of the bird's foot trefoil or whatever? Um, does that mean we get the same kind of butterflies? You know, it's made me notice art has actually made me notice it more. Yeah. I always loved it, 
but I think I'm really noticing it now. And just recently I've got into um, painting birds as well. So uh, it's, it's moving from plants to animals and birds too. So yeah, just really enjoying it. Well, it's interesting hearing you talk because actually I'm aware then of the things that you're saying that you're doing work that I didn't know about as well because I see the, the beautiful illustrated, you know, lino prints that you do of the gorge and particular buildings that I recognise and obviously the Iron Bridge. But I've loved seeing your work developing with the birds and the cards and, yeah. like you say, with jigsaws and this thing about noticing nature and seeing how things change over the years that's affected my work in a different way where mm. I write about it now and mm. I write poetry and it's a, it's a kind of the poetry is like a little photograph for them me to go back and write more um, I'm going to put lots of photographs up of uh, Mandy's work as well but I'm just going to come round the other side now so we can have a look um, a little bit out of the oh it's also very very hot <laughs> come round out of the out of the sun and <laughs> you can maybe take us through some of your process with yeah. your sketchbooks as yeah. well because this is nice to see how things emerge yeah. and start well, well when I first started getting into the printmaking um, I went to a really good printmaker called Ian Phillips who taught me the basics of lino printing and I was really bowled over by his sketchbooks and the way he taught it was the immediacy of the sketch bringing the immediacy of the sketch into your final work if you just work from a photograph it's sort of static somehow mm. so it's nice to put that distance from so you obviously observe in real life and you're putting those notes down in a sketchbook and it comes with it comes emotion doesn't you absolutely know, emotion yeah. comes along with it yeah yeah um, and and i don't always go to the next stage with these sketches but by doing the sketches it really does something to me and my creativity yeah so um everywhere i go now i'll take i'll take my sketchbook so wherever I go on my holidays, um, even just sitting in the garden or whatever, I will always have my sketchbook with me. So we've got yeah. something from Yorkshire um, last year. Um, just fascinated by trees. Oh, um, yeah, me bridge. too. I mean, as you see, I've you know, a little bit of structure in the landscape there, a little bridge. Um, but, yeah, fascinated by shape. Yeah. Because I suppose the strong, the idea of strong line, it, it comes from the graphic mm. designer in me. Yeah. I love line um, work, but, yeah. But I, I do like to, you know, kind of um, play around with the looseness of the watercolour. I mean, I take a very simple set with me. I mean, these really inexpensive paints. Yeah. I come back to these every single time. They cost me next to nothing, but they're the most handy things to have. Yeah. And then, of course, you've got your little water bit as well yeah. there. And a yeah, tiny little great, brush. Actually, so they yeah. all come from a really basic set. Don't ever be fooled by needing really yeah that's really nice really to see yeah yeah um and that idea of having a book is something that we've talked about and um throughout the library to lane project of people actually collating yeah. um, their responses to nature in notebooks and making yeah. their own uh, visual yeah. depictions of becomes, what they're seeing it so it's lovely to see yeah. absolutely a nature diary, diary. It's yeah lovely to, to look back on yeah so sometimes i'll do a sketch in situ and then i'll I'll maybe put my photographs with it for later use. Yeah. Um, yeah. So when I want to get the detail in something, I'll say, okay, what was the close information there? What was that was the landscape, or what did I see that was near me? And then I'll get my photographs out, and then I'll sketch from my photographs to see what sort of textures of rock or, or plant life that I want to to, to put in there. Um, you know, sometimes I'll. Sometimes I like to experiment while I'm out there. Yeah. And I have been known to actually, you know, get the bag or something yeah, that I was, yeah. you know, carrying my sandwiches in that day. Absolutely. And like oh, I love try that. And, try yeah. And get something yeah. Going on with that. Um, yeah. So it, it's just just whatever's available. This is a little bit of resist work and then painting on top, but just trying to observe it with that gut feeling. Go back to the studio get the photograph you took that day and then explore some of that close information as well yeah so you can bring some detail to it sort of further down the line so it's, yeah lots, lots, just, lots to look at. oh it's wonderful <laughs> and um yeah, what i'll do is i'll put uh, with this post i'll also put lots of photographs of some of mandy's cards and artwork um and lampshades and 
drawing books and lots of different <laughs> things that you do. You're so yeah. diverse, and I do admire yeah. the way that you explore. Yeah, I do. Yeah, that. I've got lots of ideas. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Keep on going. Never so. Stop. <laughs> I'm going to so, so thank you ever so much. Thank you. I call I call, it's Amanda Hillier, although I do call Amanda because that's all I ever know that's ever fine. known you of. But Amanda, Amanda Hillier, <laughs> and I'm just going to leave you with a lovely view of the trees in the Ironbridge Gorge, and I hope that's inspired you to get out there and take notice of what's on your doorstep and see how you can respond to nature all around you.